Welcome to Buratech. In this episode, we're going to be talking about whether traveling and working remotely is a good idea. All right, so a lot of programmers don't necessarily need to go into the office every day. In fact, for many years, I made six figures at home and I could have traveled the world and I didn't do it personally. I know lots of people who make a lot of money and then they travel and work remotely. The question is, is, is it a good idea and should you do it? I'm gonna give you the pros and cons and if you wanna work remotely, I'm gonna give you the top 10 reasons to make it a success. So let's take a look at the first pro about working remotely and traveling. The pro, most obviously, is that you can travel and see the world. If you've been sitting around your hometown and you need some excitement, this might be a great option for you. If you've lived in the same city or the same country all your life, then this might be the best chance to see what the world has to offer. This is especially good if you don't have to be tied down to a particular location. In fact, if you do do this, you want to travel as light as possible. More on that later. Luckily today, there's lots of services and great accommodations so you don't have to break the bank and you get a variety of options. And best of all, you'll get to meet a ton of new people from a ton of different locations. This will definitely broaden your horizon. Let's take a look at the cons of working remotely and traveling. Well, the first con is that it can be expensive. If you eat out all the time, then it can easily get super expensive. Not only that, but sometimes short-term rentals can be very expensive. You want to make sure that you shop around for the best deal possible. The second con is that you might think it's a great idea when you start out, but two months in, you find out that it's a really bad idea. You could be in a very expensive location with all of these contracts like rental agreements and you're stuck there. This can be a huge problem for you and a very expensive problem. Not only do you not like the place that you're in, but you're also losing a lot of money. The last con is that your work stream might dry up. You want to make sure that you're financially solvent to do so. Now, not everyone can do this and it's a privilege if you can. So you want to make sure that you don't lose money or go into too much debt doing this. So let's say now you have an income stream and you want to work remotely and travel at the same time. I'm going to give you the top 10 tips to make sure that that's a success. The first tip is to shop and keep shopping for the best deal. Believe it or not, if you spend a lot of time shopping for the best deal, it will come up. Now, you want to make sure that you plan everything in advance, but when you shop for the best apartments and the best places to live, you want to take the extra time. You also want to make sure that you're budgeting every single expense. The second tip that I have for you is to plan your trip in advance and meticulously plan your trip in advance. So for instance, let's say you want to go through Europe and you want to spend a month in Denmark, you want to spend a month in Germany, and then you maybe want to spend another month in Switzerland. You have to plan that in advance and you have to make sure that you can afford all those different locations. Believe it or not, if you live in a big city, sometimes doing this might actually be the cheaper option, but you have to put it in a spreadsheet and make sure that it actually is the cheaper option. Now let's say you make a plan and everything's going well, but you want to change your plan. Let's say you move to Germany and Germany is really good and you want to stay there a couple more months. One thing that you want to do is don't overcommit to any kind of rental property. The best thing that you can do is to buy things and rent things as needed. So you want to make your plans as flexible as possible and you want to travel as light as possible because remember everything that you own might only be in a backpack or a suitcase. The fourth tip I have for you is to make sure that you have a good internet connection. The whole world doesn't have the same connectivity when it comes to the internet. Now, if you're living in a relatively developed nation and you're traveling there, then chances are the internet is good, but that's not always the case. Sometimes a hotel or a rental might say they have internet, but the internet speed isn't very good. So you might be used to super fast internet speed, and if you don't have that, then your business might suffer. A simple example of that is that if you're constantly doing Skype video calls and you don't have the bandwidth, it doesn't look good. So always make sure you ask about the internet connection. The fifth tip I have for you is to comply with the laws of your own country. Now you might be leaving your country for a long period of time and your country might have specific rules about that specific instance. You need to make sure that you comply with all those rules. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you can get in trouble while you're traveling or when you come back. And this is not good. So make sure you double check what the laws are in your specific country about leaving it for an extended period of time. The sixth tip I have for you is to make sure you have good medical insurance. 
Now, medical travel insurance isn't that expensive, but if you're leaving from, let's say, six months to a year, it could get expensive. Now, you wanna shop around for the best coverage, and sometimes your credit card might even have coverage. Now, personally, when I travel, I have coverage on my credit card. I also have private insurance. And sometimes I even buy extra travel insurance. The last thing you wanna do is to go to another country, you get in a car accident and get footed with an insane bill. So make sure you're over covered when it comes to medical insurance. One thing that you might not understand is that sometimes you might not be able to get that money for a long period of time. So if you have multiple plans, then chances are you'll be covered better. The seventh tip I have for you is that you need to stay focused on not only your business and your source of income, but also meeting new people. Now, personally, I'm the kind of person that can sit in his room and work all day, and it's very hard for me to get up and meet new people. If I was traveling abroad, I would make sure that I made it a priority to get up and meet new people, because otherwise I would just stay in my room and maybe build an app or two. And if you're the opposite of me, where you like to be social, you have to make sure that you go into your room and build and make sure that you are keeping your income source readily available. Because if you don't do this, then the whole plan falls apart. When you travel, you can meet tons of new people and you'll get tons of opportunity, but you also have to make sure that your work is sustaining you. The eighth tip about working remotely and traveling at the same time is to make sure that you are packing extremely light. You wanna make sure that you have just enough clothes and items that you can fit it into maybe a small suitcase and your backpack. The reason you wanna do this is that if you need to hop on a train or a plane or putting something in a taxi, you need to make sure that your items are not very big. It's very cumbersome to travel with a big suitcase. In fact, one time when I was traveling, I had to put my bags in a very small boat. And if my bags were any bigger, then it probably wouldn't even fit in the boat. So my tip is you wanna to learn to do with as little as possible, but still make sure that you have enough to survive. The ninth tip that I have for you is if you are traveling abroad, chances are there's a lot of cool new people that you'll meet and there's opportunity along the way. You also wanna budget for this as well. You might get a wonderful opportunity that you never thought existed and you want to take that. You need to have the flexibility to take that. And the best way to do this is to call yourself a consultant. If you're a consultant, you can pick up jobs here and there and you can even work for a very large price for very little hours. Lots of people do this and if you have a job already and you have a great resume, then this is something that you can do as well. Now the tenth and final tip that I have for you is to save as much much money on food as possible. This can be your number one expense. You can go out and eat at a ton of different restaurants for three meals a day and you'll watch your expenses pile up. If you're living in a place for a month or two, you do want to go grocery shopping because after all, that's what you would do at home anyway. So always watch your food budget, especially when you're traveling. All right, so that wraps up this video. I hope you had a lot of fun listening to me about the pros and cons of working remotely and traveling at the same time. And I hope those tips that I gave you will help you to achieve this goal. Do you work remotely and traveling? I want to hear from you, so please write in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe, and today's featured course is the Complete Entrepreneurship Bundle. This bundle is essential for you if you want to create your own business. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you in another video.